Our modern fear of fat will be looked back upon as the largest mistake in nutrition science history. Fat has made us human. Our ability to use tools to become the best hunters on this planet has allowed us to maintain a smaller body frame in comparison to other carnivores. The caloric and nutrient density of animal foods is why Frankie Boy is standing here all dolled up for you ladies and gentlemen and not out in the woods with the other monkeys scratching their butts. I'm going to give you guys an understanding of the types of fat, how our body digests fat, as well as an understanding of what makes a fat good and what makes a fat bad. So there are three main types of fat. You have cholesterol, phospholipids, and triglycerides. In food, we are more familiar with saturated fats, unsaturated fats, and trans fats. Cholesterol is in every single cell in our body. It's a precursor to just about every hormone, and it is needed uh, to produce bile, which is required to absorb fat. Phospholipids are a cell membrane component, and triglycerides are actually the main component of these fats. And triglycerides are a glycerol molecule bound to three fatty acid molecules. And there are dozens and dozens of types of fatty acids. Uh, we, we can't discuss all of them. It's just impossible. But it's important to note that triglycerides are composed of glycerol and fatty acids. And triglycerides compose every single fat there is, whether it's saturated or monounsaturated. Saturated fats are solid at room temperature because they contain hydrogen and they don't have any double bonds. Atoms are bound together with two electrons. When there's more than one set of electrons, the fat becomes unsaturated and unsaturated fats don't have hydrogen. So they can have double or triple bonds. Monounsaturated is one and polyunsaturated is two or more double bonds. These are looked at as the good fats, whereas saturated fats are viewed as bad fats, but that doesn't make much sense considering any food that contains fat will have both saturated and unsaturated. So what do you mean? Like how can a food have both and one is good and one is bad? Isn't nature telling us something? Trans fats are usually associated with some negativity because of the past, and there's good reason. The artificial man-made trans fats are essentially vegetable oils, which are poison, that have hydrogen added to them to make them solid at room temperature. Conjugated linoleic acid and vaccinic acid are naturally occurring forms of trans fat that occur in animal flesh as well as human breast milk. Linoleic acid is the primary cause of heart disease, uh, but we'll go into that later. Although there are dozens and dozens of types of fatty acids, most people are familiar with the omega fatty acids, which are primarily used for synthesizing cell membranes and regulating inflammation. The omega-3 are ALA, alpha linolenic acid, the plant precursor to EPA, which is used for regulating inflammation, and DHA, which is an important component of cell membranes. It's needed for brain function. Omega-6, we have linoleic acid, the bad stuff, and arachidonic acid, which is the animal form of omega-6. That is another regulator of inflammation. We're seeing a pattern here. The plant form is bad for us and inflammatory. The animal form is good for us. Omega-9 fatty acids are actually produced by the body, so we don't need to obtain them in the diet. Oleic is the most common one. So how do we actually absorb these fats? Triglycerides in these fats become emulsified by bile. This broadens the surface area and allows the fat digesting enzyme lipase to break down these triglyceride molecules into their components of glycerol and fatty acids. Once it's broken down into these components, the intestines can then absorb it. After it's absorbed into the intestines, it combines with cholesterol and apoproteins. So the triglycerides combine with cholesterol and apoproteins to form chylomicrons. Chylomicrons transport fat around the body, whether to the liver, to muscle cells, to fat cells. Once it reaches where it needs to be, another enzyme is released. Lipoprotein lipase is released in the capillaries 
and that causes the fat to be released where it can then be used as energy or stored as fat. What tends to dictate this is your blood sugar, the carbohydrate content of your diet greatly influences this. So when you consume carbs, you have high blood glucose, uh, that causes the glycogen to be stored in the fat. Glycogen being the form of glucose stored in the muscles or fat. When you don't have any carbs in your diet, your blood glucose is low. So the pancreas releases a hormone called glucagon. Glucagon signals glycogen to be released from fat cells. And then it turns into acetyl coenzyme A, uh, which is the precursor to energy metabolism. So carbohydrates in the diet, you're not using fat for energy. If you remove carbohydrates, your body is going to start using fat for energy. Granted, your blood sugar is low. One thing worth mentioning is that carnitine, which is only found in animal foods, although our body can produce small amounts, greatly improves energy metabolism by transporting fatty acids across cell membranes. So if you eat more meat, you will have better energy metabolism. Well, why are we so afraid of fat when we are made of fat? Our body is literally half saturated fat. Cows have a bacteria in their stomach that hydrogenates polyunsaturated fats into saturated fats. When a cow eats grass, it's the equivalent of a human eating that cow. If people actually understood the digestive differences between ruminant animals and humans, I think a lot more people would be on the carnivore diet. As our cells are made of fat, the membrane fluidity is regulated by ratio. This is why the First Nation Alaskans who consumed a lot of fish would take twice as long for their blood to clot. The omega fatty acids in the fish literally changed the profile of their blood. This means that the fat profile of our body is regulated by diet. All of the lipids in our body, the fats are going to be composed of whatever we eat. You are what you eat. And this is where we run into issues. As you can imagine, if you're consuming inflammatory fats like linoleic acid, and now your body's made of linoleic acid, the body doesn't actually recognize it. It sees it as a harmful substance and starts attacking it. The omega-3 to omega-6 ratio in your body is incredibly important. Uh, when omega-6 is high, and maybe even you're consuming rancid fats, there's a lot of oxidative stress, this is usually caused by the vegetable oils. So we have soybean oil, corn oil, cottonseed, peanut, canola. These are typically in processed food. Every restaurant fries with this stuff. You know, my mother used to fry chicken cutlets in soybean oil a couple times a week. And they're also put in shelf stable foods that have preservatives. It's literally a science experiment. Think about it. Sunflower oil, corn oil. Like what is corn oil? You took a whole field of corn and made it into one bottle of corn oil. It's something that humans have never consumed. And not only is this vegetable oil extremely bad for us, if you feed this stuff to an animal, the fat profile of the animal becomes composed of linoleic acid. So if you're eating pork that was fed corn and soy, you're getting the linoleic acid through the animal. This lowers the omega-3 content of the meat. It drastically raises the omega-6 to the point it's harmful. Uh, the saturated fat content rises slightly because of the lower omega-3. And the reason beef isn't super high in omega-6 is because of the digestive system of the animal. Animals are affected differently uh, by how they're fed due to their digestive system. Like people would never eat farm-raised fish, but they're perfectly okay with eating grain-fed beef doesn't really make a lot of sense. The end result is less nutrition. You know, what these animals are being fed doesn't have vitamins and minerals. Therefore, there's no vitamins and minerals in the flesh of the animal. And we have more inflammation in our body. All right, so why is linoleic acid actually so bad? As you can imagine, if you've been consuming a large amount of vegetable oils, your cholesterol, your triglycerides, your phospholipids, your cells become composed of linoleic acid. As a normal part of cell function, chylomicrons transport these fats to various tissue. Some of this tissue is in the arterial wall. When these lipids, the cholesterol, enters the arterial wall and it's composed of linoleic acid, the body actually attacks it because it doesn't recognize it. 
in patients that have heart disease, the fat that's actually deposited in the arteries is mostly plant fats. We know linoleic acid is what's causing heart disease. It's just not commonly known. I learned this from a podcast with Tucker Goodrich and Ivor Cummins. He spoke about how linoleic acid and modern vegetable oils are really the only explanation for why humans are getting heart disease. And it makes sense because when we look at the percentage of linoleic acid in these foods compared to more natural foods, it becomes clear that humans were never meant to consume any linoleic acid. Linoleic acid in animal foods doesn't exist. I'm led to believe that when humans consume this linoleic acid in what are definitely unnatural amounts, it is something that our bodies are not meant to deal with. When you're eating animal foods, you don't get any. So our cells are not supposed to be composed of any linoleic acid, and it makes sense because it's inflammatory to the body. But what are the positives of the contrary? the conjugated linoleic acid. It's interesting how the animal form is actually good for us because conjugated linoleic acid increases performance and it reduces disease rates. We also have the omega-6 arachidonic acid, which regulates inflammation as well as cholesterol. So you have linoleic acid in the plant form. We have omega-6 linoleic acid and we have trans fat hydrogenated linoleic acid that are literally killing us, but the animal form is actually good for us. And the most important thing is fat carries and contains vitamins. We're out in nature, we're hunting animals. The tissue of these animals contains everything our body needs. It gives us the fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, K2, all of the fatty acids our bodies need, and then we digest the triglycerides, turn them into chylomicrons, and the chylomicrons transport these vitamins around our bodies. So why are we so afraid of our blood work? When you actually understand all of these things, it becomes questionable as to why we're blaming cholesterol and looking at blood work and saying high cholesterol is bad. It, it doesn't really make much sense when there are so many lipid components and so many issues with modern diets. And these can be exacerbated by other things. You know, you can have rancid fats uh, that cause oxidative stress, which result in cell death, apoptosis. And if fat cells are dying in the arterial wall, that's literally what is clogging your arteries and giving you heart disease. You could have rancid fish oil. You know, fish oil is generally seen as good for you, but if it's oxidized, it, you know, causes stress in the body. And all vegetable oils are oxidized to some degree. Uh, the real solution is to consume high-quality animal fats. If it's something you can't obtain in nature, don't eat it. You can't obtain seeds. You can't obtain these plant oils, even olive oil, although olive oil is lesser of the evils. If you couldn't go out into the forest and obtain it, then you shouldn't eat it. And that means that the only fats you should be eating are high-quality, wild-raised animal fats. If you guys would like to check out a book to really understand the importance of fat in human history, read The Fat of the Land by the Armour Stephenson. It's about an Arctic explorer who had many meals with the First Nation Alaskans, pretty much following a meat-only diet for a long period of time. Thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully this has given you an understanding of good fats versus bad fats. It's really simple. Raise an animal the right way. The fat content of the animal will be free of linoleic acid, and it will have all the vitamins your body needs. We are so out of touch with nature, we have to rediscover things we've been doing for hundreds of thousands of years. If you guys could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and share it if you can. If you guys would like to support me further, I have a bunch of other videos on my channel that will help educate you more uh, in really just how to become the healthiest version of yourself. In addition to that, I have recently launched Frankie's Free Range Meat, my goal being to provide you guys with high quality, nutrient dense animal foods. So if you'd like to order anything ranging from uh, grass fed beef to liver to caviar at an affordable price, check out frankiesfreerangemeat.com. You guys enjoy the rest of the week.